Hello everyone, my name is Isaacu Yamamoto and today I'm showcasing uh, myself playing a couple of battles in the Hayate tier 10 Japanese premium destroyer. Uh, you can get it in the tech 3 for 2 million free XP. Um, and I thought I'd show you um, well, why I got this ship, what I think uh, would be good about it, uh, some drawbacks. Um, demonstrate the overall gameplay and of course also uh, really go into some of the strengths and weaknesses. Um, now the Hayata is the third tier 10 uh, Japanese destroyer next to the regular tech 3 destroyers the Shimakaza and the Ogumo. Um, and it actually sits fairly in between um, those two destroyers in terms of gameplay uh, also in terms of statistics, weaponry and that kind of stuff. It is pretty stealthy at 6.1 kilometers, but it's definitely not nearly as stealthy as a Shimagasa. A lot better than a Rugumo, but still worse than uh, most tier 10 uh, destroyers like a Kirig, Yuyang, uh, Z52, stuff like that. Um, However, 6.1 kilometers is fairly stealthy. Uh, it does mean in this case that uh, contesting the A cap is actually quite difficult, uh, and I'd rather stay away from the cap a little. Uh, as we can see here, I actually get detected by the enemy daring, uh, who immediately opens fire at me. I start shooting back, but the enemy Neptune also starts shooting at me. And we can see a clear weakness of the Hayati, which is that it's still a Japanese ship, meaning it's fairly fragile. Now, unlike the uh, Shimagasa, the guns on this thing actually reload really quickly, so I managed to deal quite a bit on, of damage on this uh, daring, and I don't think he'll be too keen on chasing me around too much. Um, the gun armament is simply put um, simply in between the Shimagasa and the Harugumos. You still have three turrets in three dual turrets, much like the Shimagasa, but they reload much faster. Um, for the torpedoes, you get two times five torpedoes. So that's essentially again a Shimagasa loadout, except that you lose out on one of the three torpedo launchers. Now, I myself actually reckon that uh, in many cases two launchers will be enough to deliver the strike power that you need. But of course the Shimagasa is more of a specialist torpedo boat, whereas this is more of a flexible uh, combination and the Arugumo uh, really lacks the torpedo power to be very um, flexible, it's more of a gunboat and it's definitely not a torpedo boat. We can see here we're probably gonna hit one torpedo, maybe even two on the turbot. Um, and of course, since these are Japanese torpedoes, if we actually hit a torpedo, that will deal some significant damage. We do hit the torpedo, no flooding unfortunately, but still pretty good result. Um, we're actually already up to 30,000 damage. Now, to put this into perspective a little bit, um, we had a bit of a firefight at the start there. And uh, I actually got away really good there. Uh, the Daring and Neptune didn't hit me too much. Uh, but they would have actually been able to completely obliterate me. And I've had battles where that happened. That you're simply done for within two minutes. Uh, and you could argue, okay, but you're being too aggressive then. Well, perhaps. Uh, I've decided you should probably play the Hayata more like a Shimagasa and less uh, as an aggressive gunboat. Um, but it would of course be nice if uh, it were a bit forgiving in that sense. 
Now, of course, when we smoke up here uh, and we open up our guns on the Bismarck, we can see that the firepower on the main battery is really a lot better than on the Shimakasa because there's no way the Shimakasa could ever fire its guns this fast. We can just keep using our torpedoes, see if perhaps every now and then we'll hit one torpedo on the turret for the Bismarck. Um, would even be really great if we can hit the Daring or Neptune with them, but we don't even know where they are right now. We're dealing quite some damage with our uh, guns. Uh, that's of course the Shimukaze uh, and the Rukumo guns, these Japanese ones. Or actually, particularly the Shimakaze guns, they really deal a lot of damage, and these are unlike our Uruguay guns. And the Hayata actually has 127mm guns, so they hit quite hard, and that's really nice. Um, the thing is, again, um, you, do, you do need to get into these situations where you can safely use them. So, of course, a smokescreen is the classical situation where, as a destroyer, you're uh, good to use them. Um, but in this case, open water against the turbids, uh, I should be able to use my guns fairly confidently, even though I'm actually within secondary range of this turbids. We did get a flooding, so if we get a fire on the turbots now, we should be able to deal quite a lot of damage. There's the fire. Now we can actually stop and withdraw. The daring struggles to hit us, uh, so that's pretty good. And I'm hoping one of the torpedoes will hit on the turbots. Then we might even be able to finish him off get another torpedo and of course the massive damage there on the torpedo hits um, and we can clearly see that this is a very good result and this is basically what you'd want to do in the high art and get these nice combinations between um, the heavy firepower on your main guns to start fires but also just for the plain raw damage uh, and combine that with a pretty reliable uh, torpedo output and in that sense I do think that the Hayata is a pretty uh, good ship uh, it is a nice crossover between the Shimakaza with, which actually has a very very potent uh, torpedo armament but sort of struggles um, to use its uh, main armament and its main guns and the Arugumo, which relies all on the main guns, but really struggles to use the torpedoes effectively. Uh, and in that sense, uh, we can see here that Ayata is quite a solid um, uh, midpoint, I think. Um, but it is still just as squishy as uh, Shimakaze, and in gunfights, uh, that can really hurt. And now, since this battle um, is basically going to end with me capping A and then I get blown up, detonated in fact, um, it's not too interesting to show everything here, it will simply take a while before anything happens. So let's go into the next battle and then we can see what this question is, is all about. So in this battle we have quite a lot of radar ships opposing us. Uh, we have the Des Moines, Salem. Salem is a bit shorter range but still uh, can be very annoying if it gets near us. A Moskva, Kutuzov, which is particularly dangerous. Um, generally a Kutuzov won't have radar I believe. Um, instead he will have smoke screens. Uh, but of course it's very dangerous uh, due to the guns that it has. Mogami is also very dangerous, it definitely does not have any radar, but if he carries the 155mm guns then he will be absolutely able to uh, deal massive damage to us. Um, then the Holland, uh, which may carry radar, I think it always does. Um, as well as the Akizuki. And Nakizuki is again, it does not have radar, uh, but Nakizuki is a Japanese gunboat. And I'm not even sure if I'd want to be on a one-on-one -on -one 
gunfight with uh, Akizuki. So in this battle, um, normally I should sort of want to be quite reluctant, um, but I decided here, okay, um, on the C flank I seem to have a Baltimore, Puerto Rico and then Alexander Nevsky with me. Uh, meaning I've got a lot of radar power and a lot of cruiser firepower sitting behind me. So I might as well try and um, scout towards sea a bit. Um, to see how the enemy team is positioned. Uh, if I can drop any torpedoes, maybe even damage um, the enemy destroyers a bit. Um, and of course we can see here that I locate someone uh, just behind C, but I'm also being located. So, quite a good chance here that there is a destroyer here uh, which will be locating me um, and that he will be going for C. Now, we actually can see now that the C cap is being taken, um, suggesting that there is indeed one destroyer in C, and the other one is probably in B now. Baltimore used his radar um, and manages to spot the enemy Akizuki just outside of C. Now if we would be able to uh, catch this Akizuki off guard that could be really nice. But of course we do have to watch out a bit for the Mogami and Moskva backup. And we no longer see the Akizuki. I'm being shot at by the Mogami. Um, of course, at such ranges, it's fairly easy to dodge these uh, shells. Um, but now the Moskva starts raiding me. I already managed to take some hits from the enemy uh, Odin. Um, What's far more annoying is that the enemy Moskva is actually laying in wait and he manages to shoot 6000 damage off of me and that really hurts because the Hayata really doesn't take uh, these kind of hits too well. I'm already down to less than half of my hit points uh, and you could imagine here that um, yeah, if the enemy Akizuki were to be a bit closer, uh, if he were actually still spotting me, I am spotted obviously, um, but he could easily finish me. Now, I did actually hit a blunt torpedo there, which is most likely on the enemy Akizuki, because I did reset the cap um, and there's no other ship that could have possibly been there. Uh, so we dealt a massive amount of damage with this one torpedo hit on the enemy Akizuki. Um, but that's pretty much sheer luck. Um, that does however grant that the Akizuki can now no longer really go for me because then um, yeah, he won't win the fight anymore. If he were full HP then he would easily be able to outshoot me. Uh, especially since I'm down to half HP now. So I've already done some damage now due to this uh, lucky hit on the enemy Akizuki. What I'm kind of trying to do now is figure out where the Akizuki might be. I'm not really feeling too eager to actually combat him, especially now that the Mogami shows up. Um, but I'd also like to move in on this Friedrich der Größe and Bismarck in the middle. If I can drop some torpedoes on them, uh, and especially if I could land some torpedoes on them, uh, that would of course be pretty cool. And the Friedrich der Größe currently seems to be pushing towards C, uh, so I would like to try and hit some torpedoes on them. Now, of course we never really know if uh, he will be going to see, but he already seems to be turning away. Uh, and I can tell that my first set of torpedoes is definitely not going to hit. Meanwhile, the enemy Bismarck shows up, um, and while we could possibly uh, try and torpedo him. 
uh, it also seems as though that might not work. So instead, uh, I decide to torpedo the enemy Friedrich der Größe, to which I'm now fairly close. And of course, I made a bit of a rookie mistake here because he can simply hydro me, um, and yeah, um, this is quite a dumb mistake. Um, I'm obviously trying to move out now. I managed to move out. Um, but I do fluke most of my torpedoes. Uh, I do hit one torpedo, but it's still fairly miserable. And now I have the choice between being hydro by the Friedrich de Grosse or, um, well, by the Akizuki apparently. Um, I decide to try and take the gunfight with the Akizuki, so I may at least be able to. Now deal some damage to it before I die. Um, but the enemy Akizuki decides to smoke up and meanwhile I am of course still spotted. Um, now of course since the enemy Akizuki smoked up uh, I now go undetected. But this Friedrich de Größe is still uh, dangerously close to me. I would like him to die, so I decide to start shooting for him uh, in the hope that he uh, can die, but he already got shot by our Friedrich de Grosse, so that was kind of unnecessary on my hand. And now, yeah, I've got 2800 HP left, and I'm probably not going to be able to outshoot the enemy Akizuki while surviving myself. Um, our team has lost all caps, and yeah, what am I gonna do here? Uh, I figure my best bet here will be to move towards C, uh, try if I can maybe hit the enemy Akizuki when he's a bit off guard, or maybe even uh, try and get some torpedoes on the enemy Odin, but. Um, of course, I'd need to be quite a bit lucky. Um, if I were to move into the B gap, I'm quite certain that the Salem would raid on me or uh, the Holland or Akizuki would come after me, and I would not want that to happen. So I decide to drop a set of torpedoes on the Odin. Um, hopefully, he'll move in. Um, yeah, of course, the best thing you can do here is really see what happened. Uh, now, I don't have too much time left in the battle because, of course, the enemy team has three caps. Uh, so, I decide to just use a smoke screen and start shooting at this Odin a bit. Uh, make the most out of it. And while we don't get two great hits here, um, the great rate of fire on the Hayat actually ensures that we do get some uh, damage off two fires even, uh, which are now repaired then. But the Odin unfortunately turns out away from my torpedoes. Um, and while they would have probably still been in range, um, the battle actually ends. And that's a shame really. So, yeah, I would really um, argue that this ship is um, mediocre at best. Um, it's got a pretty interesting playstyle. Um, it is a bit like a Shimakaze. Um, you got to play it very stealthy. Uh, but then when you do get into these gunfights, it definitely does pack, uh, pack a lot more punch. It's fairly easy to start fires. Um, and obviously hitting torpedoes, um, yeah, that simply deals a lot of damage. Um, but what we saw there at the end, if you 
yeah, if your team feels hard uh, or if you simply um, get overwhelmed like I did at the start of the battle and you really get shut down, uh, it's not a very forgiving ship. Um, I would even argue that it uh, it is not always a very fun ship to play. The first couple of battles that I played in it were really a pain. Uh, I've also had uh, one or two much better battles in it, um, crossing the 100,000 damage. Um, and I think this would be a ship that you can probably reach um, upwards of 200,000 damage in. Um, um, but it, it requires a very selective playstyle, and, um, and that's a bit different than what I had expected. I had expected it to be uh, more of a uh, gunboat with a potent torpedo armament, uh, more to, um, leaning towards the Harugumo style than towards the Shimakaza style. Um, and it definitely is none of that. Um, it simply is far too fragile for that. And um, yeah, um, my personal opinion on the cost of this ship, the two million free XP. Um, two million free XP is really quite a lot. Um, simply put, uh, you can get two tier nine. Uh, Free XP ships for that. So, for instance, the Alaska, Azuma, uh, Friesland, uh, the Aegir, I think it is. Um, and personally, I would say uh, that's much more value for your free experience um, and then the Hayata. Uh, I myself got it, well, mainly because I already have a lot of those uh, tier 9 free XP ships. And of course, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a collector of the uh, Japanese ships. And Hayata would make an awesome addition, I think. Um, but the playstyle is really quite specific. Um, now, of course, in this battle we've seen some... Um, pretty good points about it, and especially in the first uh, battle, the 100,000 damage battle. Um, but seeing how this battle started, you can imagine that I've also had battles with um, basically zero damage, like 5,000 damage on a bit of gunfire. Uh, and that's just uh, very, very painful. Now, I haven't showed the, uh, shown those because it's uh, just frankly boring to look at. Um, but you can imagine that um, you really need some some luck, a nice um, a nice battle for this ship to work, and you definitely need a lot of patience. And when you do get this patience, um, yeah, then you can end up with uh, yeah a torpedo hit on this Friedrich. He didn't quite cooperate, of course. Uh, had this lucky torpedo hit on the Akizuki, of course, which really, um, I think that really helped in this battle. Um, unfortunately, the Odin basically dodged uh, all of my torpedoes there in the end. Definitely hurt our uh, damage output. Um, but all in all, um, this ship, it's a, it's a tough one, you know? Um, I think it can be worth uh, two million, two million free XP if you're quite the collector. Um, if you are interested in uh, ships like the Shimakaze, uh, but definitely don't expect it to be the strongest gunboat out there um, because it's not going to be that. Um, Quite frankly, uh, up until now, I'm actually quite a bit disappointed with this ship um, because even comparing it to regular tier 10 ships, I think um, this ship has just too little going for it with a low, uh, with poor concealment 6.1 kilometers, which is significantly worse than the Shimakaze. Um, and the trade off between uh, the firepower on the main batteries and then having to um, 
to miss out on one torpedo launcher is frankly just not worth it in my opinion. So I think the Shimakaze would actually be a better ship and the Harugumo would actually be a better ship. And this being a crossover between the two. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it offers a nice um, new Game gameplay style, I think, um, but honestly, I don't really think it's worth two million free XP. Uh, so that's my two cents on it, and uh, yeah, as usual, let me know what you guys think.